Hello, everyone. Warm welcome. Very nice to have you here back at Berlinale Talents, have you back here in the How. It's very nice to have you on already our second day of uh, Berlinale Talents and we keep on dreaming. And dreaming is always something which goes beyond words and beyond the written form, of course. Uh, but uh, for this moment and for this morning, uh, we'd like to also stress some other point which is important to us, which is collaboration, because this session is an interesting session, but on the other side for us, it's also a testament of the collaborations and the connections we have with different kinds of the festival, but also, of course, with the world outside. And for this morning, we will invite those people here all together on stage. Um, and first and foremost, of course, it's the guests from Memory Box, which is a Berlinale Talents, uh, virtual Berlinale competition film. Um, and uh, we're bringing them here uh, in a very special festival year, of course, presented their film bring back their film in June, but we have them here on stage this morning for that conversation. It's also uh, a longtime collaborator from inside here with us. It's Franz Rodenkirchen. He's joining Joanna Hachi thomas and uh, Jose Desel, and he is our script station mentor for many, many, many years. Uh, he's busy working and he took some time away from individual sessions with the script station participants this year uh, and will also contribute to this uh, conversation. And last but very not least, this entire event is a collaboration with the World Cinema Fund. And World Cinema Fund uh, is an in-house partner of us. It's also a partner, of course, within the bigger framework of Berlinale Pro. And it is also some uh, initi initiative, some fund uh, that is very close to us uh, on the way how we understand cinema and how we want to move it forward. And I'm very, very happy and glad that we can make that collaboration happen this morning together with Vincenzo Bugno. Vincenzo Bugno is the head of the World Cinema Fund and he's here with us today. Vincenzo, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I would say not even as a, only as a moderator, of course, that's your role, but also as uh, a partner and wonderful uh, many, many conversations we had before the festival. Vincenzo, the floor is yours. You will bring the guests on stage and uh, we will see each other again for the Q&A. Thank you very much, Vincenzo. Floor. Thank you very much, Florian. Thank you very much for this uh, introduction. And uh, well, you, you started talking about dreams, which is, as we know, uh, the motto of these talents this year. And I tell you the truth. So I have been dreaming for years uh, uh, about this, this topic, about the opportunity of having a conversation uh, um, on, on this topic, which is very complicated, very important for, for cinema, I think, because, uh, uh, well, as, as a world cinema fan, uh, I have the opportunity, the joy, uh, pretty much the joy, I would say 90% is the joy to read many, many scripts every year. And uh, pretty often I'm just wondering, so what kind of scripts I'm reading now? because many, many scripts are not very connected to, to the real idea of cinema, because uh, many times it's only about words. It's, it's not about uh, a kind of visual telling. So cinema is, telli is, is telling story with, 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 with a visual identity. So, uh, and this is not always uh, the case. So somehow there is, a, I have a strong motivation for this, for this uh, topic. And, um, well, uh, I have been dreaming for years about this opportunity. And uh, one day, uh, some weeks ago, I got in touch with our fellow Franz Rodenkirchen saying, so let's talk about it. I think it's, it's a real priority. There is a need. We should talk about this topic. And uh, I was very, uh, really, it was a big joy because I had the impression, oh, this is a soulmate. So we share the same opinion about, about uh uh, uh, scripts and the way to, to tell and, and, and uh, write cinema. First of all, I would like to add also that, uh, so this title, Can We Write Cinema? So it's the title of a wonderful text, a wonderful article uh, wrote by Franz Rodenkirchen, I think five years ago, which is very important as a source of inspiration if we, uh, so in order to understand which is the real topic of with, uh, discussion. And um, I think, um, well, Franz, uh, um, let's talk about cinema. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, the slogan, uh, um, it's not only about uh, money, but let's talk about cinema. It's one of the most important slogans of the World Cinema Fund. So I feel very close to this, to this slogan. 
Franz, uh, uh, you are a script advisor or, or a script doctor, which is a very strange definition, or I think you should uh, explain the best definition, or you should explain really what you're doing, which is your professional uh, 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 role. And uh, uh, maybe more important than this, why this question, can we write cinema, keeps you so incredibly busy? I can understand it, but maybe you can explain a little bit more. Okay. Thank you, Vincenzo, and uh, thanks for inviting me to this, which is indeed also something that I am very, very interested in and passionate about, to be honest. Um, so I am a, you could call it script consultant in German, you call it film dramaturg, sometimes it's called script editor. I'm not a script doctor. Nobody's ill, nobody needs to be treated. And script doctors, if you use that term, are people who rewrite scripts, which I would not do. I'm not interested in that, writing, rewriting other people's scripts. Um, what I do is I work with people developing their uh, scripts. And I, I prefer to say developing visual narratives, which is already an indication that script is often broken down into story. And when we have story, we are already, you know, cutting away a big part of cinema because cinema is not only story and maybe it's not even primarily story. And in my 20 odd years of experience internationally working with people from really all over the world uh, as a tutor in quite a few international workshops as well, um, I come across a lot of scripts that do not adhere to the form of dramatic storytelling, that are not even interested in telling dramatic stories. They are not interested in kind of reproducing theater with the means of a camera, but they want to create something as Robert Poisson said, instead of using the camera to reproduce, uh, use the camera to create. And they want to create something that is about visuals, about the, the relation to the visuals, the impression of the moment, the relation to the screen and something that is maybe inexpressible through words. The problem is when these people start writing scripts and they have to, otherwise they will not enter the process of uh, you know, applications, funding, support, and so on. When these people write scripts, they often find themselves confronted with uh, feedback that says, this is not uh, really a feature film, it's not long enough, um, there's not enough character development, not enough plot points, or whatever. So for me, it was important to say, how can we write something, because we have to write, unfortunately, to convey what will be seen not only in, as information, but also to approach the idea of a kind of reading experience that would get as close as possible to the intended viewing experience. Is that even possible? To come close with words to a visual experience. Thank you very much, uh, Franz. And uh, thank you very much for the definition. I'm not a doctor, nobody is ill. I think it's, it, helps, it helps a lot in order to understand the profession. So, uh, Joanna, welcome. So I'm happy we can talk a little bit about this topic. So what about writing scripts for you and, and Khalil also, particularly considering that you are not only uh, uh, filmmakers, but also visual artists? For us, uh, a script is always, we, we, we write a, um, a script uh, a lot, we, we, we worked a lot on a script, but for us it's, uh, it's not a program, it's kind of set up. And it's always very difficult to explain what we want to do when we write. For example, uh, for us, uh, in, this, in this film, Memory Box, for example, um, it is, it, there is a part of the film where the, the, the uh, teenager, Alex, she remembers, she reimagines, she doesn't remember, she reimagines the past of her mother. And this what is, is what we call the visions, for example. And it was very difficult to show this and to, to, to to people that were reading, there was always this problem. Okay, the story we understand, but what you want to do, we, we don't understand at all. And, and they were afraid of, also because we are artists and visual artists, so this would make them more afraid of what we could be doing, you know, because art is always a problem. We want films to be artistic, but we always are very afraid of doing films that could be artistic uh, because it, would, it wouldn't be, accessible. Uh, so for us, we, we see the, the script as a setup. 
So how, how do you do that? How do you explain to people that go, going to finance your film or uh, that the, the, film, the script, even if we worked a lot on it, is not something that we're going to uh, really uh, respect in a way. We, we need to put the script um, in, in danger when we work. Uh, we write it, we don't give it to the actors, and uh, then we see what's going to happen. We do the setup of the film, and we think that making films, especially in a region like ours, has to, to have something to do with losing control and putting your film in a state of fragility, where you search while you are doing it. So it's always very difficult to, be, to, thank, <laughs> to thank uh, you explain. Very much. Yeah. Thank you very much, Joanna. And uh, Jose, um, maybe a um, strange question, but um, do you think that you write with the camera? And how is the relation of a DOP uh, with a script? Is it ambivalent or how would you describe it? Hi. Um, well, we, 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 I wouldn't say we write as a um, cinematographer, but we surely translate. I think my role is of a uh, translator, translator in, in, in some way. We have a script. It's written in English and French, whatever, and we have to translate it in another language, which is the cinematographer language. So, grapher writing cinema is photography and movement. So, so it's a strange process. But a script at a script at the end, we know it's not going to be a finality. The script is a tool. So we have to take it and and um, and transform it. Uh, uh, Jose, particularly in your case, I think um, what is uh, very important, what is difficult to understand if you read the script, is the relation with time and space. I think, which is uh, sometimes uh, I miss something if I read the script because I don't know understand. Oh, what about the time? What about the space? And also France. Uh, wrote a lot about this. So what about time and space as, as a cinematographer, particularly considering that you have to translate the script in your own language? Well, I think those are the, 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 base, the, the basic uh, foundation of, of cinema. That's the, that's the art of cinema. It's to play with time and space, right? Uh, we do the first part, I would say, and then goes to the editing, which is another part of the of of the writing. Yes, uh, maybe. So we are already talking about this, uh, uh, Joanna. So what about script, director, material, editing? So and what about the relation of a, an editor with a script? So would you say they are strong enemies? Oh, no, not at all. I have uh, the same editor. We've been working uh, with Tina Bass uh, from the, our first short film. She, uh, she was here for all our films, even the artistic videos. So she knows uh, very, very well our work. So when we arrive at the editing room, she already has like a very clear idea of what we want to do. And uh, it's really a moment in the editing room where, when we totally rewrite the film, even if it's a fiction. Of course, with documentary, we, we, we are used to it, but with the film, because, uh, because our way of working, as I was saying, we don't, we're not giving the scripts to actors, so there are a part of improvisation, part of things that doesn't really work. So you have to rewrite it and to see what you can do. And in this film in particular, because there was a lot of uh, this very strange things of filming notebooks and uh, and writings that we worked a lot with Jose on this idea. And uh, so it was really very important for us to rewrite. So in the editing room, it's like a mini studio for us. We record, we take pictures, uh, we, we film something that we would film after again. Uh, uh, if the idea is good, and we, we, we break this film, we break the script all the time. And so it takes a lot of time because of this uh, doubting a lot what we are doing. Thank you, Joanna. Yes, would like to add something? 
Not, that is not the enemy. I, I couldn't understand this uh, relation if it was the case. Thank you. So I think uh, the time is, uh, we have time now for, for the first clip, but particularly considering what you're saying now, uh, what you said now, and particularly considering that uh, uh, your personal experience uh, is an important background of the film. So please, let's start with the first clip. Thank you. Thank you for the first uh, clip. And uh, Joanna, maybe I think we would need now a kind of long log line of the film, if you uh, can contextualize uh, the story just for two minutes. Okay, so the story is that uh, this is uh, what the, the teenager that we see in the, in the clip is Alex. Uh, she's 15. She lives in uh, Montreal with her mother, Maya. And uh, the film starts when uh, she was, she's with her grandmother and they are preparing uh, dinner for Christmas and suddenly there's a box uh, arriving from Beirut. Uh, the grandmother and the mother left Beirut 30 years ago without ever returning to the country. So, so this box is coming with them and we discovered that uh, it's full of notebooks, uh, tapes and letters that uh, Maya uh, wrote to her, the mother of Alex, uh, wrote to uh, her best friend in the 80s. But Maya, she doesn't want to confront her memories and she says, like, Look, I'm not opening this box and you're not uh, seeing what is inside, but Alex wants to see it because she feels that something is, is inside that would interest her. And she was, is going to pull out all the notebooks and uh, uh, here is the cassette, the tapes. And little by little, she, she was gonna follow uh, the life of her mother as, as she would do with a, with a saga or a series. And here uh, in this clip, we see her when she really puts uh, on the first uh, tapes and she started to discover the first notebook. And our idea was this one is like, how do you, see, how can we see what she could imagine? For many years, Khalil and me, we worked as artists on the latent images and uh, this kind of thing. So things that we would uh, take in photo without developing here, it would see that it was a, a kind of reverse, how we develop a, a kind of imaginary, a kind of imagination of Alex. Uh, and. Uh, and so the idea is that you would go from a, a picture, because there's a lot of uh, photo in the film, photos that Khalil took and some that we made for the film. And, uh, and so from this photo, 
she, when she goes out, uh, when the scene continues without uh, uh, references, we would go in the black. And then they would come back because there is a kind of orchant, you know, of the of the of the film and of the of the memory. And uh, this was uh, the first vision that we had in mind. Uh, it was this one. And with Jose, we worked on this idea that this vision, we we for to do the the girls going out on the black. We would we we did we put black uh, tissues on. Uh, and part of the decor, so, so, so people would, would go, actress would go inside the blackness and come back because it's a blackness of memory. So here it's a clip that we did. So uh, we can say somehow that uh, the biggest part of the script was already written because, I mean, your diaries uh, and, 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 and the letters, uh, I think uh, uh, you had already in mind many, many moments of the film. And if you understood, uh, if you understand well, you you work together more or less also during probably the writing on the script because otherwise it would have been so it would be have been very difficult to find the right language for this film. So maybe Jose, can you do say something about this about your work together and developing uh, 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 the visual language of this film? Well, I think first of all. Uh, I came, Halil and Joanna wrote a lot together and, and Halil, who is a photographer, uh, did a lot of research and, and, and photos. It was a, a huge amount of work before I even got into the project. And then we started as a trio to, to work together. Um, it's, it, was, it was a bit strange at the beginning because, of course, those visions were put on words, but how can we film it? And, and not only how can we film it, but how can we uh, concretely um, make it happening? Joanna was talking about blacks, but when we talk blacks, we, we, we would cover whole buildings in the city to, um, but it was still art. What I, what I really love about Joanna and, and Halil work is that it's, we call it bricolage, it's arts and craft. Um, it's very arts and craft, and 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 we love it. I mean, we it's uh, we don't use a lot of technique. It's not it's not um, it's not very imponent, but it's it's in the details, every details uh, that we worked on on the, the notebooks and the and the writing, and it was very precise, even though it was. Um, it was a work in progress in terms of uh, of, uh, of artistic uh, vision. Um, thank you very much, Jose, because uh, you have um, you have suggested now a wonderful title for the next panel about this film, which is let's call it bricolage. I think <laughs> it works it works well. And uh, now I have a question for Franz. Uh, first, I'm, uh, if you understood, you have watched the film, I think. And so what about writing a script for a film like this? So I'll, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, could be a challenge. And, uh, but I would, I would like also to talk a little bit German with you now. I mean, it's only about two words, which are, mm -hmm. I think very interesting in order to understand how also this, this, uh, this kind of script. So you should explain, if possible, the difference between Erlebnis and Erfahrung. Okay. Um, well, of course, I don't know uh, about uh, Joanna and Khalil's experience in writing the script. I, I thought, at, especially, you know, in the, the clip we just saw now, um, that clearly there is an idea to convey something that comes from let's say, an emotion and an idea that is not necessarily primarily narrative, but more uh, emotional, sensual, whatever you want to call it. And every time uh, you are trying to do something like this, especially as I think every viewer will know something about the connection between what the film tries to convey and Joanna's uh, real life experience from the past. So, there is this assumption that there is an element that may be beyond story. And how do you convey that? Which is maybe predominantly the emotion of not only um, 
how it was back then, but possibly also how it is now to go back into that memory, into the memory box. Um, speaking German, yes. Um, I think it's attributed to Walter Benjamin, uh, who wrote this uh, great essay, The Storyteller, but uh, even if it's not, um, the German language can make a difference between two things that the English would translate as experience, both of them. Um, and there is one, the Erfahrung. Erfahrung means it's the kind of experience that can be narrated. It can be conveyed with words without losing important aspects of the information. For example, I put my hand into an open fire. It hurts. I burn myself. Um, I'm not going to do that again, maybe. Um, but I can convey this thing to someone who has not been with me and who is not even in front of any fire. I can say, yeah, look, don't put your hand into an open fire because it hurts. You will burn yourself. It's not nice. It's information that I can convey. Now, Erlebnis is something else because Erlebnis is that which happens in the moment when I put my hand into the fire and it's my sensation in that moment. And that sensation is very hard to convey with words because words are already a translation into, let's say, the wrong medium. Um, how can I try to convey this sensation that is essentially an erlebnis, which the English also call experience, um, through writing? And I do feel that there are quite a lot of filmmakers who are more interested in conveying what I would call erlebnis as experience, meaning the immediate relationship you build to the images on the screen as it happens. Conveying emotions, conveying something that is beyond storytelling and therefore a bit further away from being translated into words. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Franz. Uh, then I would like to say we stay with France in another moment. Let's talk about languages. Uh, going back to, to English, another key moment of your or point of your article, and I think uh, of your Weltanschauung, of, of your vision about cinema and script, is the difference between narration and description if we talk about scripts. So maybe a couple of words about this. Well, um, a description is something that, you know, when you read scripts, you sometimes find if it's not dialogue, that you get this kind of block of text. And within this block of text, sometimes you find things that are descriptive, meaning they are static. It's something that, as an image, you will see all at the same time, because it's an image. Um, and the text needs to put it in a linear sequence in order to give you the details of that image. But it's still something static. So you're reading something, um, that would just describe a, a moment, like looking at a painting or a photograph. Narration, on the other hand, has this element of movement. It has the element of, and I don't mean action. I mean, every narration, uh, due to the fact that it's also more than just information, um, it has an implied narrator somewhere. And narration means that when you have these blocks of text, these are the things that are not descriptions, but nonverbal actions. And nonverbal actions are as important, if not even more important, than words in cinema. So one of the things that I found out is that a lot of readers uh, kind of shy away from reading that block of text because it's like secondary to the dialogue, where I find it's maybe it's not only as important, it might be more important because I think dialogue is the last resort when it comes to cinema. Um, so distinguishing between description and narration also in the text could be really important to convey the feeling of moving through something as you read. Thank you, Franz. Then uh, I would say now our Mm, probably uh, Jose would introduce uh, the clip. Uh, let's go back to the bricolage and uh, we can start with the second clip. <laughs> كل شي عم بينهار الحياة 
نفسية حتى الليرة اللبنانية أنا ورجا بعدنا عم نلتقى بالسر محلات مخباية ومرات كتير بعيدة بكتشف أماكن جديدة بس بيروت عم تتدمر أكتر وأكتر إذا ما رح تصدق ما رح تعرفي بعرف ليه بحس بدي اشوف كل شيء تصور كل شيء مش عم بقدر اوقف خايفه مدينه النهار او حتى تختفي Thank you. And um, uh, Johanna, our friend, which is a friend, a film critic, Jay Weisberg, in this article in, in, in Variety, wrote also that uh, Johanna and Khalil, they use um, a high-level artistic language with some avant-gardistic elements, which is affordable, particularly in this film, for everybody. So what would you say about this uh, statement? Do, do you agree? Um, yeah. <laughs> this was the intent. Uh, we wanted, you know, there's always, Khalil and me, we are artists and filmmakers. So there's always this idea that contemporary art is elitist. Uh, it's something that you can't uh, really uh, share with the majority. It's not accessible. So in this film, there's this attempt of writing a film uh, that would be like um, more a classical film in a way. And inside of this film, we, we would inject a lot of our artistic research and experimentation. And uh, so in this clip that we, that we see here, we are using many different materials. Um, some are super eight that we had in our uh, in our uh, studio for like more than uh, 15 years. So they are full of scratch. Some are, Jose took uh, some images and we are mixing a lot of uh, Super 16, eight millimeters photographies that are photographies that Khalid took in the eighties. And uh, here I want to come back to what Franz was saying, like how in a, in a script would you explain this, for example? Uh, it's something that we don't even know at the moment where we are uh, writing, but we feel that, and, and the idea was memory is something that is sensual. It's, there is a sensuality, it's multi-layered, it's, it's like reminiscences and you don't know why it works. At what moment these reminiscences would come back to you and you could share it with the others. The idea of the, of the accessibility of memory box, it's that of course, it's not about my memory box. It's about memories that we share in a way. Some parts we would share, some parts we won't. And, uh, and uh, it, won't, it wouldn't work for all of us, we, 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 but some music, some moments, it's for our generation and, the, and its transmission to other generations. So in the, in the script, if we come back to the subject, it's very difficult because it's a real experience that we are doing. We, we are experiencing this on the, uh, when we are working with Jose with our bricolage because we didn't want to do special effects. And with Jose, it was a perfect match for us because she could totally understand what we wanted to do. And also, um, this sensuality is like forbidden in when you write script. 
it's this, this uh, what you, you talk about, France. It's not description, it's not dialogue. So what is it? It's not useful. So usually what we do, we don't put the dialogue when we write. We just add them after. Because they're going to change. Because the actress, that they don't, in this film, for example, they don't have the script. So, you know, it's, uh, they, they, they will do other kind of dialogue. The dialogue is only his as information. And sometimes just because if you don't... Uh, uh, write any dialogue. People are so afraid. It's uh, very simple. So you put some dialogue as indication. But it's the sensuality that we wanted to give experience. Uh, Joanna, just a question regarding um, the film. So I focus on the film now. I think there is a, a, a huge uh, uh, similarity between the daughter and, and the mother. So I'm not talking about uh, the other structure, grandmother, <laughs> mother, about uh, Alex and, uh, and, and, and the mother, because um, so it's about how they deal with life and how they record life. Because, uh, I mean, the mother was um, using the camera all the time, so a classic camera and not digital camera in order to record life and communicate with friends. But, and, and, and the daughter is, is very similar but uh, she lives uh, we, in, in the digital world. So it's uh, everything about social media. So, but there isn't a real difference between the social media now and the notebooks, diaries, letters uh, 30 years ago. So what, what do you think about this? This is a very important point of the film for us, Khalil and me. You know, we have a daughter and she, is the, she was the same age as me when I rediscovered those notebooks. And I had this relation, a kind of reaction to her using her phone all the time. You know, it's like the, the, the classical problems that we have with, our, with younger generations that's always on their phone. And, and then doing this film, we really understood that it was in a way another kind of dialogue diary with more immediacy. Of course, uh, when you, uh, but I, I, I don't want at all to be nostalgic in the film of those years and I want to, uh, and I, I want to put the technology in the film. So the idea was that Alex is reactivating the, the past through the technology of today in the present. This past is not here just to be reactivated in a nostalgic way. It's, it's here to be reactivated with the tool of today. The tools of today are used by Alex. She's taking picture with the clips that we, we saw. She's, she's using this. But of course, these pictures are totally different. There is an immediacy. We did the, um, a lot of picture for the film, but it's nothing compared to what the, the, my daughter do. She does uh, with her phone every day. So it's this idea also that representations are different. We used to represent our life in a way. Today, it's totally different. Khalil made maybe 50,000 pictures in his life. There's not one of a, a, as a selfie, for example. So this is the idea also that Alex and her mother are very similar. And we have, in a way, to not to be in a reaction to technology, uh, but to in a way to, to do a link, a bridge between the past and the present, uh, notebooks and phones, you know, this was uh, also the, the point that we wanted to, to, uh, to work on. Thank you. Uh, I think what is also peculiar and crucial in this film is uh, the relation with text, because there is also some very important moment with uh, voiceover, so telling something. Uh, which in a film, in particular in a script, a voiceover can be a nightmare. So at the killing moment of the script uh, and the, big, uh, the biggest challenge. Uh, but in this case, it works very well. Uh, would you send? Uh, because I would like to show the clip first and then let's talk about uh, this, uh, this topic. So thank you very much for the next clip. We are not only talkers, we are viewers.
Je voyais mon père sombrer, mais je ne savais pas quoi faire. Il fuyait la maison et son désespoir. Il était hanté par mon frère, tué à sa place, ça, ça le rendait fou. Alors petit à petit, il a baissé les bras. Il a abandonné ses idéaux. Et même nous. Teta. Oh, la pauvre Teta. Elle essayait de de faire comme si on avait encore une vie normale. Et moi, je ne pensais qu'à Raja. Durant ces nuits, ma mère cherchait son mari et moi, je cherchais tout ce qui aurait pu me ramener à Raja. Le pays se cherchait. Tous, on était à la recherche de quelque chose qu'on ne trouvait plus. J'étais tellement en colère. So, well, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Johanna. You, we were starting talking about this uh, topic about text in the script during the shooting, during the editing. I think it's uh, we can talk. We could talk days about this. Um, it's true that f this is the second part uh, of uh, the way we uh, we remember in the film. So there's the first part, the, the two clips that we saw, it's more the visions of Alex about her mother. And here it's her mother that is telling the second part of the story, the one that is not in the notebooks. So not, she, she didn't wrote this part. And, um, and of, we have this idea with Khalil that we wanted to do a voiceover. You know, voiceover is the enemy. In the, it's not some, it's something flashback, voiceover. We like to re, re try to re-experiment something with this, and so it would it would be a very long voiceover. That uh, and and uh, some actors they nearly don't say a word in the film. And this was really was interesting also to, to be able to, to show this without dialogue, without sound, because you don't always remember sounds. You, and, and for example, in the case of Alex, she didn't have the possibility of hearing the dialogue, so there were, there were no dialogue. And in the um, flashbacks, there's no dialogue also, or, or very few, because of uh, this person that she remembers. We don't know if she really, her souvenir are, are really uh, uh, the, the truth, or she, maybe she's rewriting a history, but this is what she delivers. And so this idea of putting a big text and big voiceover was also the second problem of the script when readers would, uh, would take it and say like, oh, voiceover, like uh, it's, it's not going to be visual. Well, it's, it was of course uh, the contrary that we, are, we were searching for. Franza, what about you and uh, voiceover? If you read the script uh, with um, an important voiceover, what do you think? Uh, this, script, uh, this script is ill and I'm indeed a doctor, or how, how would you <laughs> deal with this? Um, it, it's of course hard to generalize. I think the main thing is, what does the voiceover want to convey? What is it used for by the writer? And if it's used to sneak in backstory information, fill in some gaps, and do all the stuff that the filmmakers were not capable of doing without words, 
Um, you can sense that already in the script, and uh, I would try to talk about how it can be maybe changed. Because if voiceover becomes information, you know, we are very far from narration in, in more than one respect. Um, actually, voiceover is also sometimes used to bring together uh, heterogeneous images, almost like montages. Um, but usually, because people don't fully trust the emotion that comes across, or very often it's the case. So the voiceover is also to supplement or to make sure that the montage is felt in the right way. It's, it's very individual. I'm, I'm, I'm not one who would say I'm against anything per se. Um, there are other things I may be more against, like the idea that every film wants to tell a dramatic story in three acts. But, uh, it depends, you know, you have to talk about it and see how it actually benefits the overall experience of the film. Uh, thank you very much. And then if we talk about the story of the film, one day Maya and Alex fly to Beirut. So let's watch the clip. Tu vois, c'est ici qu'on habitait. Ça a été complètement rasé. Un bel immeuble à la place. So thank you very much, uh, um, Jose. I, I know that this part, this clip is extremely important to you. I mean, this is an extremely important clip for the film. Rediscovering the city, the smell, you can smell the city, the perfume of the city, the, the atmosphere, um, the new city, because obviously the, the uh, um, Maya uh, was, was a citizen of the old Beirut, and 20 years later, it's a different city. I think, uh, what about uh, write and shoot about emotions? I think it's an incredible challenge so to make emotions visible. 
And so what about a cinematographer in a situation like this? It's also a clip about joy, so it, there are so many things together. Well, at this point of the script, I was, um, when I went to Beirut, I think I was exactly like Alex. I was discovering, because we shot in Montreal first, and, um, and, and, and then we got to, to Beirut to, sh to shoot the, the part there. And I was, yes, I was like the character. So I, I this clip I, 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 um, I enjoyed because also I re-saw the work of Halil and Joanna in their other movie called Je veux voir, which I was a very fan of. And those layers, there's, that's, that you can write, but it's, it's visual when you have the mother, but you also have in the window the reflection of the city. And then at some point, she opens up the window and we see her face. And then we go and see the promenade on the, um, on the ocean. And there's super impression again, which are like a ghost of her of her memory of and the the reality of of the moment so those are those i think we we you can write them of course on paper but it never i think it uh, you have to shoot them to 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 really feel it uh, Joanna, what, what do you feel so watching a clip uh, like this, particularly considering the situation in Beirut these days? I can imagine, I don't know if the film is being shot uh, before the explosion or after the explosion. Yeah, the film was shot before the explosion. And, uh, you know, the return to Beirut was a very important part, even if it's a more um, classical part, the return to Beirut. But it's the, sir, it's the moment where you confront uh, what you've been thinking of all those years with another reality. Uh, and this, uh, this confrontation is very important because it's a confrontation with the cities that change, with the ghost, like Jose was saying, with, with so many things. And what, what, what the person that you are that's changed so much uh, and uh, has maybe little relation with the person that left this country, in the case of Maya, even if it's uh, evolved after. And for me, it's very, it's very strange to see some images, and uh, especially those ones, because and at the end, there is a party where it's, um, we see very well the port of Beirut. It's uh, really a place that was totally destroyed after the blast. And it's extremely strange because you, you see it, it's still there, and you can't help, I think, and a lot of people told me that, but, but thinking about and seeing the blast, because this image has become so iconic, and you, you see the port of Beirut as a harbor, and you see also the, the, the destroyed part of it. And, um, and while I was re seeing, because we, we finished the film after the blast, uh, Khalil and me, we were just thinking like of this idea of um, the, the possible regeneration because we don't have this possibility of being totally in despair in, in my country. We, 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 we are in the lower state of collapsing and of despair, so we have to hold to something. And those songs and those li the slide and the song, song at the end of the film is this for us. So when I see these images, I reconnect to a very sad part in me. And, uh, even if for uh, when we shot them with Jose and the actress, it was a part of, you know, more uh, the memories come back and the returning and more, in a way, happy moment of catharsis that changed. Uh, but it's also exactly the same, strangely. It's, uh, it's saying the same thing today, a moment of catharsis that we need. Thank you, Joanna. Uh, Franz, what would you recommend to a, a writer who so would like to write a, a, a part of a script for, for a, sh a scene like this? I was just thinking about this because indeed, you know, this is a, a, a moment where the, the, the means of the cinema are, are quite particularly obvious because we have two layers of the image. Um, and those layers 
may correspond to two times. At least that's the feeling you get through this return. You know? So there is one relation, which is a relation to memory. And there is another relation, which is to the present moment. And those become overlaid first as a reflection in the window where you get the kind of separation from the present and you feel that Maya is maybe more within the memory. And then she opens the window and she's approaching this present moment. Uh, but then we go back to the promenade and the promenade has this super imposition of, at least that's what I thought, two times happening simultaneously, which can only be conveyed through the image. This is where, you know, from something diegetic, the reflection in a window, we move to something non-diegetic, which is the fact that we can superimpose one image on another. And how to write that without getting technical is really, really difficult. You would need a lot of descriptions, and maybe you would even feel that you need to tell people how they should feel, which is usually what doesn't work at all. So this little excerpt was a really good example of, you know, uh, how the cinema can be used, how images are something that cannot just be locked into a description uh, without losing maybe the most, the most important thing. Thank you, Franz. Uh, present memory, I, I, would you like to add something, Joanna? I would just say, um, to adding something to what, uh, to continue, that what, what we do is we don't really try to convey this impression in a script because it's impossible. We just do some lines, you know, saying like, the, the, they return, they go to this place, to this place. And you cannot put this because uh, it's an experience, experimentation. So sometimes you don't have to say everything in a script. <laughs> you can just know something and just be, you feel strong about it. And you, you, you say some words and people will understand or not, but it's okay. Franz would say it's about an uh, erlebnis, and it's not an erfahrung. <laughs> um, so it's a lot about present and memory. I think um, these two words adds, um, add a lot uh, in, in order to talk about my next question, because uh, always Jay Weisberg wrote that in this film this is, there is a Proustian uh, uh, taste, I mean, talking about Proust. And uh, Diana, do you, do you agree? And also, uh, I do hope you are not to, to write a, a script about La Recherche for your next film, because it would be a terrible challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a, a really, really, really challenge, La Recherche. But um, uh, something Christian, I imagine, because of this idea of Madeleine, you know, this, uh, this what we were talking about, like, how, how, for example, the sound of the tape recorder. This is something that uh, it's re was really important in the films of forward when you, uh, you, you rewind your tapes. This, this sound is something, it's like, how can you push some buttons of, of our minds to just reconnect with, with the teenagers that we were, all of us, in a way. This is why it's not only a film about Lebanon, even if it's terribly a film about Lebanon and our 80s and today and um, and transmission and the fact that we don't share history and all this, but also it's a it's a moment for, for us to reconnect with our generation and the relation we have with younger generation and what in in this moment. So I think that uh, Proustian is this what, what he means is like the reminiscence of things and how do you you have to put them like uh, you scratch on a, a, a small scratch on a notebook uh, where, where you smell the graph all this I think it's come back it's like I, we wanted something totally uh, in the texture of the film that you know you don't smell in films but it, if you could just have the, the impression of the textures of the smelling of the sound of all this this for me is question something that you can't define at all it's just and it's singular it is a singular experience for each person but lived in a collective way i would say this would be great if it can happen in a film well uh, thank you very much so um thank you very much for the conversation we have a q a now uh, we have an audience, and uh, talking with the audience, uh, if you want to participate, raise your digital hand uh, in the webinar. Thank you.
So maybe another question uh, uh, um, waiting for, for the audience. And Joanna, for example, uh, uh, particularly regarding this film, how do you, you share the work, uh, working on the film, on the script uh, with Khalil? I, I was always wondering about this. Um, this time, we, we wrote the script with a third person, this Gael Massé, who's a great uh, French script writer. And we didn't know each other. We met uh, and we decided to write uh, the three of us. Uh, the decision uh, to, to, uh, to bring someone else to our world, in a way, uh, was because of uh, the fact that this would it was based on personal notebooks, and I didn't want those personal, it was not a, an autobiography at all. So this idea of, I wanted someone far from, uh, from us, didn't really know us, uh, didn't really know Lebanon, uh, or, or was not familiar at all with the civil war, and so it was very important to have her, her input in the film, and we really, really wrote the three of us but with different moments. You know, when you collaborate, the temporalities are not always the same. You have a more, uh, you, you write and then you stop, the other comes inside, the, your process, and uh, we write together, but we don't write close to each other. Each one of us write on its own, and then we, we, we share, and we fight a lot. Fighting is a good when you collaborate because it's, uh, it's, it's you, the level of frustration has to be very low because if not, it's terrible. But we could fight, we can fight a lot and Jose says, <laughs> knows this. We could fight on the set uh, if we don't agree or because we are searching, because we don't know, okay? Because we, we don't want to know. We want to be searching, we want to be in danger, to lose control. So it's in writing and in uh, um, and in shooting, we, we are in the face of, uh, of research. And um, so this is how it, it goes. It goes with the fact that we are very linked together, but we are very different individuals. And we don't see the thing in the same way. Uh, so this is a good thing for me. But so we accept fighting. And in the fight, you have to find another solution. And the other solution is always interesting. The day, we have always to put what we do in danger. If not, it's, uh, it's, you are in a comfortable position. And word, in our world, we see now that everything unexpected happens all the time. It was uh, the way for us in Lebanon, but now we are sharing this experience where uncertainty is very present. So it has to be a part of what we do also. So I think it's a good suggestion also for the audience Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Josie. Yeah. No, I was just laughing when, when Joanna was speaking, but I just wanted to uh, rebound on, um, on, uh, on, on that subject um, because between Canada and, and Beirut was a very different kind of shooting. And it's very hard for um, traditional cinema technique or for even for producer or technician to um, to uh, embrace that kind of work so some some countries i think in beirut was much easier than in in in, in canada to work because it's it's more straight and 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 we were used to a, a way of of shooting at the time is very very important it's on set so you cannot so it was i think it was a kind of experience for the canadian i think it was it was a very uncommon experience france would you like to say to add something also or no you you don't need to so then uh, talking with our audience don't feel too comfortable ask questions so Oh, welcome. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Hear you me? have a question for everybody or for one of our guests? Mm, from everybody, it's all right. Uh, my question is, uh, what is the way to approach the script from the beginning to the end in terms of production design? No, not just only in aesthetic terms, 
but more in concept conceptual and the story back on how you work with the production designer. So maybe Johanna, what about script and production design? What about this process? How does it work? Sorry, I couldn't hear very well. Uh, what, what, uh, how, what is, uh, what about the script and the production, the relation? Pro production the design, production design. Uh, what do you mean exactly? What is it is it interesting for you? Uh, maybe, maybe, can you, can you repeat the question? Sure. Sorry. Uh, well. Can you hear me well? Yeah, yeah. Now, yes. Okay. My question is, what is the way to approach the script from the beginning to the end in terms of production design? Not just in aesthetic terms, more in conceptual terms in the backstory or these things. The way, the way we, we wrote the script, you want to... Um, yes. Know? But related yes. to production design. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, the, the thing is that when we started working in, on the script and uh, finishing the script, there was like this very um, blurry uh, part of it that it was like, uh, how do you do uh, things that are very visual, for example? How do you explain them? So for the first time, because usually, like I was explaining, we are more in the process of finding something while we are searching for it. We had to do like um, a lot of, uh, of uh, visual, uh, um, you know, uh, how do you say, like uh, storyboards uh, and things like that, that would be close to the, to the, to the script doing this. So we, we did a whole mood board that was uh, very developed with all our references, the way we, we, we would do it, storyboards, and we didn't respect it all, but uh, it was part of a uh, thing to, to find something for us. It was very helpful also. I didn't do it just for, for, for financing the project, but also it, it was a link. You know, you have to do bridges also. You, you cannot just say, okay, it's all in my mind, because, okay, you can do it, but you, you wouldn't find, as much uh, partners as, uh, as you want. And um, so this is how we did it. Don't know if it's, it was your <laughs> question. It's great. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe there is uh, another question. Yes, uh, I do have a question. Uh, this is for France. Um, how do you format or how do you suggest authors format their scripts to ask for funding? Should they have their own uh, script uh, to do the shoot and then another one for funding? Or is it the same? Or how, how do you advise it should work? Uh, I guess by formatting, you don't mean using final draft or whatever. I think you mean what you write and what you hide. Is that it? Or are you really talking about formatting a document? Uh, yeah, because uh, sometimes when you write, uh, they say like, no, it's too artistic. It's not informing ah, okay. enough. So it's not about formatting. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, this is a tricky one because usually when I think you should try everything you can to convey your vision as precisely as possible. Um, but of course, especially once you have received certain kinds of feedback that might throw things in doubt that you want to hold on to for good reasons. Um, you might, I mean, I have experienced it that writers then say, okay, um, obviously the film fund, once they have given us the money, they are not that closed on checking or maybe not even remembering what we make of it. Um, I'm not sure that's such a great solution, but it happens a lot. I think the, the main problem is that very often the feedback is too unspecific and based on kind of alleged truisms about script writing and how scripts shall be. So I would always try to, you know, stick to my vision and convey my vision as well as possible for, before I start this strange guessing game or a second guessing game of pretending. 
So may I add, uh, maybe it's also interesting for you, because may I add something? I'm a founder, <laughs> and uh, I, sp I spend a lot of time by reading uh, scripts uh, and, and submission for projects. So I would just su suggest be yourself, meaning try, try to be definitely closer, close to the artistic profile of, of your project, because otherwise it would be... So we couldn't really get the soul of, of, of the film. And I tell you the truth, I mean, this is also the reason because if we talk uh, about a project with a director or with a producer, so we always said we do need a script, but do we definitely need also a strong uh, uh, artistic profile of, of the film. We definitely need to understand the the... the the soul of the film. So the more I work in this world and business, the less I'm interested in, not in script, but I'm, I'm not interested in dialogues. So I'm more interested in understanding the future uh, camera work of, of the film. So the editing, so uh, let's talk about light. So please send us a good artistic vision of the film and not to reduce your idea because you think that funders wouldn't get that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so it's my turn now. <laughs> Could you hear me clearly? Hello. Hi. You're yeah. welcome. Uh, Okay, so uh, I have a question about the uh, social media aspect of this film. Like from the very beginning, Alexia uh, is using her uh, phone to connect uh, with her friends. And uh, later she kept sending messages about uh, um, photos of her mother to her friends. And um, but uh, after she was totally into the notebooks, the memory box, she started to uh, stop participating in the group uh, talk, group chat. And to me, it's like a very interesting contrast. Like her mother, she also um, communicate with her friends far away with letters and with recording tapes but uh, for alexia she mostly is in a constant uh, communication with her friends so i want to ask uh, what is the role of social media in this film like uh, why it is so present from the very beginning to the end yeah so joanna we already started talking about this topic somehow I, I, I talked a little bit about this because this idea was that this technology, social media, all this is so present in our life, all of us, not only uh, younger generation. It's like uh, we spend so many hours, you know, even now we have like, to, we, we check how many hours we spend on our phones. So, and um, <clears throat> Alex is part of this. She's, she's uh, using her phone to communicate with her friends. There is like a, a storm, it's holidays, it's... Um, it's Christmas, so they have this chat group and, uh, and they connect with each other. But little by little, when she starts, in a way, binging in her mother's life, and she's like, uh, she, 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 she doesn't have time to, so, so she takes her distance from her friends. And this, this was the idea. It was not to say that it's great, now she's going into an, a more traditional, uh, we're not nostalgic about that at all. We think this is part of our life and, and the film accepts totally this. It's a kind of reactivation, as I was saying. So it's not to say that social media are not, uh, are, you know, we have, it's, it's be it was better before, not at all. But to say that little by little, this, uh, this teenager, she, she's, she's lost in temporalities, you know, she goes back to the 80s, she, she hears the voice uh, and the sound of, um, of, shell, of, um, of bombs in her room in, in Montreal, she's kind of lost in, 
in places, in temporalities. And so she dis disconnects. And so she disconnects with her friend. And there is this scene when you see her friend and she's, she's totally in her, in her mind because she's questioning this. So, and, but the social media in the film, we really wanted to, to work with this possibility because, you know, at moments you see like all those images uh, that are uh, the, the images that you have on your phone when you, uh, so it's, it's, it's a kind of reflection also a, a questioning about memory. Do we, now we are indexing a lot. We are archiving uh, our everyday life. For, but how are we going to access this memory? This, incredible amount of memories that we have in our phones and through social media in a way we get lost in them you see like it's a, it's a way to take more images and but how we how are we indexing them how are we gonna have access to them to them so it was interesting to ask all this question without making a judgment thank you thank you Shisha. Hi. Hello, can you hear me clear? Hi. So? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. You're welcome. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Saldar. I'm from Kazakhstan. Uh, I'm the director. Uh, thank you for an amazing talk. Uh, I have that uh, great insight that we have the same fight with my, my cinematographer. He's my brother, uh, but it's just yes, some kind of fight when we discuss something on the set. I thought that might be not unprofessional, but thank you that you said we are not, we don't know what to, we, where are we going. We just have a feeling and we're trying to figure out. Thank, thank you for that. But um, currently, I have two feature projects uh, on develop uh, on the post production, uh, and after shooting, uh, we, I have some kind of exhausting. I I'm feel myself empty. But uh, can you tell me each of you uh, some uh, tips and tricks how you refill energy, how you find inspiration to continue to work on the project? So, who would be the advisor for this pretty serious question? <laughs> Do you mean, uh, sorry, do you mean when you just finish the film shooting and you have to edit it or when you just uh, wrote it and you, or, or every step of this? Uh, it it depends, it, it might be the both because uh, we have a, a few projects, uh, it's, uh, we finished the, the 12th or the second draft, but, uh, and also about when you finish the shooting movie, when you shooting production, when you finish production period. It's, it's, a, it's a very difficult moment. You're right to talk about it. It's a moment where you, you know that you have to mourn some things. So first days in the editing room, it's a, it's a day of joy and mourning. You know, it's like, uh, okay, I ah, this, I failed totally. The scene, it was essential, you know. <laughs> this is a classical moment where you get totally depressed. And this is very uh, normal. Some things that I discovered with the pandemic and the COVID is that time is so important. We never take time. We, you know, we finish shooting, we just rush in the editing room, we edit, there's a festival, we want to, to send the film to Cannes, or whatever, and you know, we don't take time. Here, we didn't really have the choice with Khalil, so we had to stop in March uh, without, uh, last year without finishing the film. So we took, we had to, to take some time and this time was so benefic. Never, never I thought it would be so interesting to take some time to reflect, to revisit some scene. And if you can do it, just take your time. You're, you're exhausted, you just rest, <laughs> you know. We know that, that it's so important now because we know that everything changed in our mind. Our relation to time, I think that maybe one of the benefits it's it's this relation to time so you feel tired you are you are right to feel tired you gave a lot i don't know how you shoot but you fight a lot <laughs> you should you you had to find a lot of solutions so maybe you can take some time and even if you can split the, the editing as we had to do it i felt that it was incredible as, uh, as an experience thank you very much So we have uh, another question now. Welcome. 
Uh, okay, my, my name is Jimbo from Japan, and my question is about the uh, difference between fiction, uh, screen, uh, screenplay writing in fictional film and documentary film. And I, I've been making fictional, mainly fictional films since 2013, and, but recently thinking about shifting to documentary filmmaking because uh, when I, whenever I submit my fictional film project to project market or fund, I have to write the conclusion. And I actually found that recently I found that I didn't really enjoy that because uh, I actually don't want to decide the conclusion before the shooting. I want to discover on the pipe or find out why I proceed the project. So, uh, so of course in documentary filmmaking, I have to show some concepts before shooting, but uh, I'd like to ask, what do you think about my idea? Do you think it's possible to, uh, some ways, uh, do you think it's possible to, like, there, there's some way to avoid or uh, avoid writing conclusion uh, before shooting in fictional filmmaking, or do you think it's the right choice to uh, shift to documentary filmmaking? Did you get a France? Maybe I can say something to this. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by, by writing conclusions. Do you mean that uh, you, you would have to express in writing what, it all is, what it's all about or what we should take away? I mean, it's quite normal in documentaries that because of the, the, the unpredictable aspect, of course, that depends on the documentary documentary it's anyway but um, there is always this unpredictable aspect of you do not yet know what you find and you do not yet know how much you can influence it beyond you know framing or whatever um, so you can of course make a lot of promises you just don't know that's why I think um, I, I do work uh, once in a while on projects that you could call documentaries in the broadest sense or hybrids and of course there are written materials, again, because it's a requirement for the funds, but um, you write differently, obviously. You cannot uh, give some kind of, you know, pre-decide on something that you haven't yet even encountered. That seems to be kind of a no-brainer. But what you do is that, to a certain degree, you write what it is that you're interested in and what are the areas that you want to investigate and how you want to investigate them. So it's maybe more about your expectations and your thought processes in how you're going to investigate that with the camera. And of course, there is this other element that you can shoot some things and use them as visual material references to the people you're going to talk to or the things you're going to film. I think that's what you do. But, you know, it's maybe not recommended to just say, OK, I'm doing a documentary because it gives me more freedom. It doesn't really. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. How are you? Uh, hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, I have a question. I think it goes for What's the name? Of, What's the name? Uh, um, uh, sorry, I'm Maya from uh, from Amsterdam. Oh. Um, yeah. Um, I have a question. Uh, I think uh, for everyone, but it was uh, Franz who mentioned like how to uh, write nonverbal actions in the script. I work a lot with dance uh, in my films, and as you can probably imagine, that's uh, very challenging to to write about uh, in the scripts. And I was just wondering if any of you have any advice on like how you approach that in your scripts, like through emotional. Um, uh, an emotional approach or like uh, the physicality of the movements or yeah how do you go about it friends the I question is for start. you yeah i can start um well i would think that a pure description may not get you where you need to go because it's an information about a movement that is essentially to express something else right uh, so, I guess what you need to find is, maybe through the context, um, what is expressed by this dance? What are we to take from it? So, in a way, you're trying to think about it with the eyes of an audience, and not about will they like it or not like it, but what can they perceive? 
how can they relate to this and what is it that I want to convey? So identifying the best channel, because not everybody can decipher dance. You know, a dance pro will see something else than the average audience. So it depends a lot on what it is actually that we're going to see. And maybe it's more relevant to kind of create a sense of, let's say me, my place as a spectator within the script, which is, um, mm -hmm sometimes can be achieved by, you know, in the writing, being aware of what we see, by even referencing. I, I don't believe in all this fake, like, uh, let's, let's pretend uh, it's a total fiction. Uh, sometimes it helps just to say, we see, or we move, or, you know, something like that, which immediately positions you inside the frame. And then you have more opportunities to build that relation through the movement. But I would never describe a dance by saying now she lifts her left arm and now she jumps <laughs> to the right or whatever it is. Thank you. So I have some technical problems. Uh, well, I think uh, that's it. So uh, thank you very much, Franz. Thank you very much, Jose. Thank you very much, Joanna. I think uh, I really wish we can meet soon live and not only in the digital world and maybe hugging each other. Be hugging is, each other, which is... Which I really, I really I miss really... in these days. Here in Berlin or in another country, maybe during another festival, so like uh, in the old days. So thank you very much for this conversation. I feel really comfortable. I think we had a very intensive conversation and... Uh, also an emotional one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much to the Thailands. Thank you very much to the World Cinema Fund. Thank you very much to the Berlinale. Thank Bye -bye. you, everyone. Thank you. We will hug soon. Oh. Thank you.